But we're going to go over a couple things before we get into the details of what you're going to be doing today because I think that one of the most common mistakes that runners make, even experienced runners, is not um, warming up properly before going on running workouts. And I think sometimes with longer distances you can get away with it a little bit more because you can afford the first 15 or 20 minutes to kind of get the cobwebs out. Um, but uh, with a workout like today's where it's shorter, you don't want to spend that time being creaky in the beginning and you want to have a proper warm up just like we would for anything else. So what today's workout is going to be um, is um, an AFAP, I guess, as far as possible in 20 minutes. So the idea is that you're running and it can either be on road or on trail. It's basically you need to move yourself uh, for 20 minutes for a max distance. So ideally you're running. Um, the score is a one direction run. So you're gonna leave your house or whatever the case is and you go for 20 minutes and then you're just gonna make your way home at whatever pace you want. So the best way to keep track of it is if you've got something like a Garmin, you can do that. If you don't have that, you can use an app like Strava and there's also a bunch of other different apps that you can use to keep track of your distance. Um, so with your warm up, um, what I'm gonna get you guys to start doing is just a dynamic range of motion. So as you normally would, spend the time, find those things. If anything sticks out as being maybe more stiff than you expected, you might wanna spend a little extra time on that. I know most of us are pretty, pretty sore from day one, um, but hopefully the mobility from day two helps a little bit. Although the squat's probably in. So uh, certainly you're gonna to need to warm up well. So starting with a dynamic range of motion and then going through manual ankle mobility. So most of you should know this already, but if you don't, you can just sit and you're gonna go through range of motion and just move the ankle in a bunch of different ways. You can kind of glide the joints a little bit. Um, if you don't have your shoes on yet, you can kind of work through the feet joints, um, but essentially just get things moving. So that's what you're gonna do um, probably 30 seconds for each side there. Um, and then once you've done that, grab your foam roller and then spend a little bit of time rolling out anything that needs a bit of care. So probably calves are going to be really important um, for this workout. Your hamstrings are probably sore, your glutes might be sore, definitely quads and that like hip pocket area. Um, and then I think lats are really valuable as well because they can kind of bind your rib cage so it makes it harder to get proper rotation when you're running. So I'd roll those as well. Um, when you're done that, so so far totally normal as we would do, um, when you're done that, get into some mountain climbers. So um, you guys know how to do those, but just spending a little bit of time, wait, just spend a little bit of time in the front position, just kind of working through the range before you switch and just kind of hang out in there and, and make the most of it. So do about 10 of those total. And then when you're done that, um, I'm gonna get you to do a walking lunge with an overhead range. So what you're gonna do is just do a walking lunge as you normally would, but when you go into that bottom position, stretch your lats open overhead, come back to match your feet, stretch overhead, and go for about 50 feet. So roughly the distance that you would go um, on the CrossFit side of the gym. So you're gonna start with that. And then we're gonna do some single leg hops. So I think that it's really important to make sure that your ankles are actually used to that dynamic motion before you run. So if you have a line either on your sidewalk or somewhere in your house, what I want you to do is some hops. So you're gonna start on one leg and you're gonna hop back and forth. So you're gonna do 10 on one side and then 10 on the other, and then um, repeat that. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, so three rounds. And then um, going um, forward and back across the line as well. And do the same thing, switch legs, do 10 on each side three times. So at that point, your ankle should be pretty warm. Um, and then the last thing I want you guys to do before heading out for a little bit of a warm up run is grab a something, and anything, it's supposed to be a kettlebell, but any object with a little bit of weight is gonna work. Um, if you don't have one, you can actually sit on a chair and hook your hand underneath the chair. You just wanna keep your shoulder down, but we're gonna do that kettlebell trap stretch. And it's helpful to go um, nose down to armpit, but also tilt your head back, because that'll get into your scalenes, which are 
accessory muscles of breathing when you're running. So it helps to decompress the shoulders, which is gonna give you better range of motion overall in your upper body when you're running. So once you've done that, head outside. And what I want you to do is do a sprint. So you're gonna go about 100 meters at 60% effort and then jog back nice and slow. And then you're gonna do three. So head back out again at 70% effort, come back, 70%, come back, 70%, come back. And then on your last one, you're gonna go 80% effort. So it's kind of relative effort, <laughs> don't stress it too much. So once you've done that, um, you should feel good to go. If you need to spend any other time on something that doesn't feel quite right, pay attention to those things. If you notice weird little tweaky things in your knee when you're warming up, pay attention to that. Don't assume that as you blast out the door, it's gonna go away in the first 100 meters. Deal with that stuff right away. Um, Quite often, if you're feeling knee stuff, you might have to put a little extra care into rolling your calves. You may have to put a little extra care in your hip flexors. Um, you can do some hip flexor stretching, uh, like couch stretch where you've got your knee behind you, uh, knee on the floor. So you can spend some time here. Put your knee on a pillow though, so it'll feel way better. Um, but pay attention to those things and, and work through them. Um, so then, you're ready to go.